So this one is uh, made by someone who does a lot of solutions for the challenges and has written a couple um, Yingsung Meta. I don't know how to say the name, uh, but I love their solutions and I love their their challenges. And this one is, is palindrome. So a palindrome is a thing that the first character is the same as the last character. The second character is the same as the second to last character. The third character is the same as the third to last character. That's palindrome. So we see a couple examples in the tests. Uh, is a palindrome ABC? False. So this one just returns a Boolean. That's cool. Uh, is a palindrome B? Yes. So it's defined that a single character thing is a palindrome. Uh, something that is four characters long uh, can be a palindrome. Do they have an example for that? Okay, let's let's actually. Uh, well, we'll make a test for it later. But um, yeah, there's nothing stopping. Like here, here would be one. A B B A is up as a palindrome. So this works with numbers as well, which makes it a little bit harder. But yeah, where would you start with something like this? Um, with JavaScript instead of typing. With JavaScript. Um, <laughs> yeah, and especially with numbers. So things that. We can start with generic constraints. How about that? Because, like, sure. Do you want to start there? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Let's let's do something we can do. I mean, at least we have that. To be honest, I would probably. I mean, it depends on what the number solution ends up being. Um, but I could see overriding the type, uh, or not overriding. What's the uh, when you define it twice, but like one accept string, one accept number. Overloading. Mm -hmm. I would overload the type if the number solution is deviates really at all from the string case. That's true. Uh, but yeah, T comes in, we don't have a string length. Um, it's like first thought was, I have, you okay, so. Or, I'm trying to solve this with programming and not TypeScript. No, so that's fine. No, nothing's There's happen. actually a really, really clever solution to checking, not like outside of TypeScript, there's a really clever solution to checking if something is a palindrome. And that is to reverse it. Mm -hmm. and see if the reversed version is equal to the unreversed version. Would you like to try that? So, like, I can I mean, set... that's what first came to mind. I don't know how I would approach that. Okay, I'll set, I'll set it up for you, and you can you can guide oh, me. Yeah, now that as soon as you do that, you yeah, you grab tail and head, and you just return head tail. Right. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so let's make a helper type in this case, because like, why not? This syntax here is also a trick because T can be a string or number, but if you wrap it like this, then it forces it to be a string, which is great because then, right. Um, right. yeah, exactly. Then you force it, uh, true and then false. So we have those, okay, reverse. Um, so reverse is gonna take a T string, fine, and then yeah, let's. I think we're going to need an accumulator, but we'll, let's just see where we get. So T extends, and you said head and tail. Head, um, tail, and then what would what would we put here? So I think we just return. Well, that else should be oh right T for the last character. Um, yeah, well, for the base case. Oh, yeah, let's look at line 31 first. So if we extend, then we're going to return tail head, mm -hmm. reversing tail, but then putting head at the end. OK, so let's try it. Accumulator here. Tail. So what I think that's going to do is so not, so head needs to be outside of that, that string, right? So returning a string uh, literal that then the first part of it is the reversal of tail followed by head. Say it again. I'm Black slow. type. I'm okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I forgot that we can uh, do this together. Oh, okay, all right. I Versus, see what you're saying. Oops. Yeah, you got it. And then at the end, we have head. So we'll continue reversing the rest of tail and a pending head. And then down here, we only have T, because there's only one character. And then, the, yeah, yeah it, you can't reverse one character. So, yeah, I think that's perfect. It. Yeah, you got it. They all pass. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's great. That's a little different. So, the um, th so one of the solutions I found for has this line. Let's grab it. Um, it's very similar, but it uses an accumulator, and you managed to do it without an accumulator, which I think is awesome. Yeah. 
accumulators break my brain. So they they are a little brain breaky. Um, yeah, and then in which case you wouldn't be able to return T. Let me actually let me just paste the whole implementation, and then we can look at them side by side. So the one that I found does it with an accumulator. So you pass in this, you know, like state that you can pass from case to case. And if you run out of character, like the way you would hit this is if you run out of characters, then you would just pass in the accumulator. Uh, but otherwise, you pass it in as the second argument and keep building up. But what you did is way cooler. I love what you have here. Um, you pass it without using one. So that's really cool. And then, yeah, this is uh, is palindrome. So let me find some other... I always look around, like I say, for some other solutions to these. So here's one. Um, this is super cool. We grab... so. This is using temporary storage. So I wish I understood this better. I'm not a like an aficionado at how to use temporary storage, but I can say that this grabs a particular value of K. Uh, of T, rather. Um, well, it should be, I think, handling the number case because it forces K to be... It does, but, but also, like, if you replace K... Oh, it does work like that? Oh, okay, never mind. Um, I'm a liar. It's okay. Uh, so let's just look at it like you this. You deleted tail. Right, right, right. Okay. Cool. So if tail is nothing, then return true. I'm not sure we need that case. We do need that. I case. think that's that single letter case. Ah, ah. Okay. Yes. 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 Right. Yeah. When we have the single letter. Okay. So tail is nothing. Return true. Then we just we check again to see if the same thing has, um, if if it has like head and head. And then we grab the middle. So I think that's really cute that it's doing that, seeing if like the same thing is at the beginning and end of the string. And then we're like going in. So in that way, we're I think this would have a n over n divided by two complexity. Like we can only the depth that we would travel is only half of the length of the string, which is really cool. Um, and then yeah, if we we recurse and then pass false if we get to a case where there isn't head and head on either side. So this is using the the inferencing that TypeScript has like in a really powerful way. I think it's a really cute example. Cute, I mean, maybe cute makes it sound <laughs> infantile, but it's not. It's a great. One cool thing here is you could extend this if you cared. Uh, if you wanted to know if the palindrome is even or odd characters, like do you have that? infer middle could be empty or it could be one. Mm, you could actually yeah. bubble that information back up with this method. Mm, yeah, that's a great point. why you would. Whereas reverse is just kind of option. doesn't, that, that approach doesn't have it at all. Um, let me see if right. I have any more. Yeah, I have one more. So here's another alternative. Let's comment this one just to make sure the tests actually pass. They do. Okay. So is palindrome starting from the bottom, uh, string or number, great. And then is is palindrome array? So here's where we're doing the string conversion. Notice a pattern, like we don't want to deal with numbers after the beginning because like it's just easier to only have strings. So we convert it to a string right there and we're passing it to string to tuple. We've seen something similar to this before in the challenges. Uh, we grab uh, the characters of, uh, of a string and turn them into a tuple by spreading them into a tuple like this, passing the tail and when we recurse. So that's pretty straightforward by now. Um, and then is, is palindrome array takes that tuple in that's that's what it gets as its single argument. And it's grabbing head and tail and checking whether or not head extends tail. So very similar to what we saw up here, except it's doing it with each piece. And um, if they do, then we can keep going and making sure that the next set inside is a palindrome. But if they don't, then we return false. So then like we get to the base case, we return true. Um, this is a little bit like heavy. See, like, yeah, I would like to see runtime performance of the two side by side. Like, is it worth converting everything to that tuple before processing? Or I, I don't. The I'm not old? one person that does this kind of thing to, to pro pro profile the performance, but I've talked to some who do, and I'm pretty sure they would say this is much worse. I think the string stuff is way more uh, quick on its feet. Than, than creating tuples and passing them around and doing inferencing from the values of the tuple. Like, there's like quite a lot of business going on to make this work. It does work. It's um, certainly less readable, I think. Yes. Um, we could do uh, here, like, uh, let's do a. I wonder if we can break it. Um, here. 
Okay, it didn't take long. In, uh, in type instantiation is excessively deep. Okay, so we have uh, our uh, yeah, our, so we have that error. Let's see if we have the same error with this one. No, we don't. So, like you said, also it seems like recursion. Uh, you can go deeper with strings. Way than... deeper. Yeah. Like here. I, I mean, uh, okay. Now we get it. <laughs> You know, so I mean, we can just see there from like a characters on screen perspective. Uh, let's keep going back until it stops. Uh, there. So I mean, it's not infinitely more. One more. Oh, okay. It's doing it. One more. Is it is it going to say loading? True. One more. So. I'll stop it there. You can probably go more, but like this is just to say, like you can go really, really, really far with levels of recursion for uh, for strings, and you can't go that far at all when you're using uh, tuples. That suggests to me that the performance is going to be better too. Who knows? But cool. Any any closing thoughts on this one? No. Awesome. I think it's a neat neat little little package. It is it. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And it gives us, a, I like that, I didn't plan for that, but it did give us a chance to like look at the performance between tuples and strings. So mm -hmm. that's cool. All right. <laughs>